<laughs> good will. Like the thing is, if you want to, if if you if there is a will, there's a way, right? Mm-hmm. You're gonna figure it out. Right. It's just it's just you're not that into it if you're not if you don't want to do it because at the end of the day, it's a bunch of savages, it's a bunch of sharks yeah. in a pool. Right. And, it's very and, hectic, very and, very hectic. And instead of water, it's clothing. Yeah. You know, and you're dealing with a lot of competitiveness. Uh, I say this to a lot of people in that place. Uh, people want to see you do good, just not better than them. You know, and it's uh. So is it kind of hard to like silence from people? No, it's fine. Is it kind of hard to like accept advice from people because it's like you don't know if it's like genuinely good advice. If it's coming uh, from a good place, type of shit. So I don't take advice from many people. Mm. Um, and the people that I do take advice from is people that I share my space with. Okay. Share my own personal space. Um, you know, it's important. It's important to surround yourself with people that you appreciate and value their time. So if you value their time, then you know, you, you're going to value their opinion. Of course. Um, so again, going back to the whole pool full of sharks, right? Like, yeah, someone can say this, that, and the third, but at the end of the day, no one really cares Mm. because, and they won't, most people won't go out of their way to tell you how you can improve. You won't get that criticism. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people, a lot of people just, um, either just, I mean, listen and watch to see what you will do and see what your next move is or, correct, you know, or yeah, some people might try to mislead you. You never know. Like, that's why it's so hard to even just take advice from people and trust people because it's like if you're not really like sure of yourself or like whatever you're trying to do, it's like so easy to be misled or, you know, yeah. at times and to the, certain people. And it, it ties back in with, you know, the experience, you mm. know, it I think we got cut yeah. off before. Um mm-hmm. The whole entry level thing, uh-huh. you know, a lot of, you, you know, you go to wherever you go and you're wherever you're sourcing your clothes um, and, you know, you've been doing it for 10 years, but there's a new kid who's on summer break that's kind of just like out there and mm. kind of telling you how it is. And it's like, who the, who are you? Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, have you ever heard of this? You know, I was like, yeah, man, I, I you know, and I try not to be insulted because i understand like they're new Mm -hmm. uh but it's one of those things they jump into something and they automatically know everything do you run across that though because like absolutely all the time like people who really just start like or just are now like jumping into like let's say just thrifting reselling trying to find product to resell and just like really talk to people who know because i feel like it, it can be intimidating like being very new into this like i know when i first got i mean i've been doing this like since i was like a little kid but i remember when i first started going into like bins and like rag houses i was like a little intimidated and i wouldn't like want to like i would just observe and i wouldn't want to talk and i would just like look at people Mm -hmm. but like people actually like come in and like like to act like they know shit yeah 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 man yeah it's uh it gets it gets wicked sometimes. <laughs> That's interesting. Because uh, y'all know. are, because I'm not going to lie, like, shout outs to, like, and, and we're we about to intro this. I know we recorded. We're about to intro this. But, like, I, I respect these guys because, like, they put themselves out there. They're, like, and there's such, there's such, like, good energy. You know how, like, some, some dudes, like, they walk in a room and you just feel their energy. And some people are more, like, reserved. They're more just, like, out the way, like. Like, Ant is Anthony's the type of dude, like, he walks in and he'll, like, talk to everybody. You know what I'm saying? He'll say what's up to everybody, you know. Like, people love him and just his vibe. And I guess, like, that does attract just people, of course, just talking and, yeah. you know, shit. Like, when you feel comfortable around people, you just talk. And sometimes you can talk out your ass and that's when you really, like, people really show, like, what they know, what they don't know. But it, it and it's, uh, I think, a curveball there is when you start saying that to other people you know like i appreciate that when other i hear it because it's so nice to hear mm. uh because again you put me in that pool of sharks you you don't hear any of that you don't hear no mm. one's going to tell you that you're good yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah not for you sure. know oh uh, this, this this guy's way better than me for no sure. one would ever say that right. uh but i know who's good i and i'm not I've never been afraid to say, oh, no, nah, this person's really good. This guy right. has a strong eye. This guy knows what he's doing. 
uh, because the facts are facts. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. like competition is competition. Like, you don't have Kobe going up against Jordan thinking he's going to have an easy day. Facts. You know, sure. uh, sure. you have to recognize, you know, you got to recognize some people don't. It's a lot of luck, you know, finding stuff, right place, right time. But at the end of the day, too, it's, it's skill. It's brand awareness. Yeah. How much you, the more you know, the more the you're going to. Yeah, find the, something. the, the better your opportunities are to retrieve something from that from that initial dollar exactly. and that's exactly why i can't say that i don't think it's entry level like i can't imagine it being entry level because you don't have a lot of knowledge but somebody like his girl like <laughs> i brought his girl solange shout out to solange you know what I'm saying? To we solange. miss you solange shout out to poppy uh, she, stole my, she stole my sewing machine yesterday <laughs> shout out to, shout out yo, to you she, yo she's paid, paid the fuck out that uh At hat, the hat i gave her it looked fire i'm not going to shout out to solange bro. i can't <laughs> wait to show her uh, or see what she did with the hat it but, um, fire. but like i brought his girl and like she's trying to get Get into like reselling and like going to the to goodwill outlets it's like it, it's like a mind fuck to her she's like yo this shit is like too much like it's overwhelming it, it can, can be, be a lot yeah. you know when you're dealing with so many personalities um uh, you don't know how to navigate yeah especially when you're actually in there when you're yeah. in the water when you're thrown in there yeah. it, it's rough you know it, you got the you got the spanish ladies you got the t-shirt bros you know, you have yeah. the guy who was doing shoes and wears, right. but now he's doing the clothing because mm -hmm. he's seeing what everyone else is doing. There's so many variables and, you know, the, all within like a close proximity. Of each yeah, other, like, you have all these personalities clashing against each other. You know, this person's bag is stuffed and they <laughs> when they turned around and just whipped you in the head, <laughs> oh, you no. know, or it's crazy, you know, but yeah. like it's not intentional. Right. It's not yeah. like. Th th their goal was, oh yeah, let me you. fill up my bag and smack this guy in the face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's so compact, right? You know, um, and everybody's digging for treasure. Like, yeah, and everybody, everybody wants the gold. Yeah. Like I do too, but you know, you got to be realistic. Yeah, yeah, you know, if you're good at what you do, you're gonna win no matter what. Um, That's key. Yeah, That's key. no matter what. Like we either you find ten twenty dollar items, <clears throat> or you found that one two hundred dollar item. Right. You know, because um, <clears throat> at the end of the day, it's like, uh, you know, it goes back to what Denzel Washington said in that interview. I'm, I'm leaving with something. Oh, you know, like I'm leaving yeah. with something. I like that. I like that. Uh, but it's facts, though, because I, <laughs> my day, I'm not going to waste a day, mm -hmm. you know, because I didn't get something that I that got my gears going. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. I, I know what the market's like and I know. How to, how to again make a buck mm -hmm. you know it might not be the buck that i want to make mm -hmm. but the most fun buck or you know the whatever the most outgoing but right. there's still a market for some of these things okay. some of these boring items yeah, and people yeah. want it and people need them so who's going to sell it to them exactly you know because exactly. this guy next to me he only wants t-shirts mm. so if he got that good t-shirt i can't be mad i just got to know like i got to leave with something you know, Ooh, yo, I'm, I ain't gonna hold you. I'm excited about this one because we have like, nah, I don't think this is good. We about to start this. We about to intro this, but nah, this is about to be a gem. I ain't gonna hold you. Nah, I, I definitely respect this guy, Anthony. Appreciate that. How, yo, what's the vibe today, Dante? Is this off the new album? Nah, bro. So since y'all was talking about Wiz in like 08, so it made me think about damn. I remember I used to love Wiz. Like I was a hard body Taylor Gang fan Same. bro like I love that nigga Taylor so Gang. I remember my first introduction to currency was a joint mixtape that they did in 2009 called How Fly yes. mm -hmm. and I've never heard of currency I think I heard of currency on Lil Wayne's like mixtapes he was like featuring some of the songs and then I I found out who he really was who was from the joint mixtape so this was my favorite mixtape when I was younger like Fire. I love this song I love this whole mixtape it's a good mixtape no it's great bro it's great um it's called Car Service for whoever doesn't know that song out there. You know, our um, Solange Uncultured <laughs> people. <laughs> What's up, Fox? Not boy? everybody's a backpacker it's like It's my you, soapbox. <laughs> if you have important <laughs> things to say, you I use a soapbox. Oh, What's up, Fox? Welcome to episode uh, 187, 188, I think, of the Soapbox right. Podcast. Wow. You're here with your boy, Sunny Tay. We got Karan in the building. AKA Amal with the um, 
Von, Von, Von Gogh, 1889 shirt. He does this you know every podcast. He describes everybody's fish, outfit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> listen to the audio. You know what, you know what, you know what I'm saying? saying? Chilling and all that. Yeah. We're cozy uh, today. You know cozy. You got myself with the... Um, Is that uh, Demon Slayer? Yes. I forgot this nigga's name. Is my favorite guy oh. from Demon Slayer. I forgot his name, but shout out to him. You know, calm fit. And... <laughs> oh. <laughs> We got a very special guest in the uh-huh. building. You know what I'm saying? We have somebody who, um, you know what I'm saying? Even though I, I feel like I know, I've know i known him for a while, even though I just kind of see him on a regular basis, but um, shit, we have Anthony. Um, hey. Shit, man. What's up, man? How you doing? What's going on, man? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Can't how'd, complain. How'd y'all meet? I'm curious. Uh, hey, up, when it's over? Honestly, it's... It goes back to what he was saying before. It was just, uh, I just was like, yo, man, how how you doing today? Yeah. You know, I was just, mm. you know, I just like to talk. If I see you every day or a lot. Right. Um, and if you spend a lot of time at whatever thrift store, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's always good to speak to people, you know, build right. that community. Um, and that's kind of how I came across it. You know, me and my buddy, my buddy started to pop up. Pretty much, uh, Tri-State Vintage pop up, and Shout out to we ended Shout up. To uh, I ended up just getting involved with it. Okay. Um, and you know, just calling him out, like, "Yo, you should definitely come by." You know, um, just sent, gave him the invite. Anthony is probably one of the nicest dudes ever because <laughs> I ain't gonna hold you for like <laughs> nah for like two <laughs> years for like a, nah let me, let me maybe like a year straight. I would bump into Ant and like. He would show someone. He would always be like, what's up? Yo, you got to fuck with us. Like, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I always wanted to, like, just connect with, with him and um, all, like, his boys and his friends. Um, because we all, like, just have a similar interest mm-hmm. and um, are just into, have, a, you know, a common interest. And, like, it, it'd be really hard because you know how, like, when you really want to, like, mess with somebody. But, um, like, I'm, I'm really big on just, like, timing and big on, like, not forcing things. And, like, I always want to be able to, like, offer somebody's. Right. Like things, but like people like Ant and um, shout out to Ruben and just like everybody I just run into, they just always are like mad genuine, just mad nice, and be like, no, we just want to say what's up, like we just want to like fuck with yeah. you, you know? No, I feel like that's a lost art just in like everyday life in general. I feel like it's hard for people just meet somebody random, go yeah, up to just them, like and approaching just approaching. Like, hey, how's your day going? Blah blah blah. Like it's hard to have those one-on-one conversations. Yeah. Now, especially nowadays, especially with when COVID happened and shit. So now, like people really don't forget like some people forgot how to interact with one another but it's yeah. dope to hear like in y'all feel where it's like a very competitive field so yeah. it's like funny how you guys can still find a way to be genuine and still conversate with one another and like yeah. all love type shit you know what i'm saying well one thing that i because one thing that my buddy ruben has taught me is the importance of strength in numbers mm. you know and it wasn't you know, you hear it here and there. You don't really know what it's about until you, it becomes transparent, right? Mm-hmm. And I didn't. It didn't become transparent until I started hanging around Ruben, right? You know, because he's got that mentality. What's, where, what's that saying? United we stand, divided we fall. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it's true. You know, it's. Uh, I've been working in fashion for a long time, and done many different things, um, but everything that I've ever done has always been by myself. Okay. And then when I met this community of, you know, sellers and my peer, you know, within my peers, um, it really became, again, much more transparent. I started to see it a little better, the vision. And uh, it made sense. Mm. You know, it made sense, which is why I was very eager to jump on board with the pop up, Mm. you know, because it's like I got something to offer here. I could do something here like this is and it was an opportunity in my eyes. Like no one's no one's pinching me, telling me to do this, do that. Mm. Um, And, you know, it's just something that I really believed in and what Ruben was doing. Well, we we have to start. Well, should we do Damn, there's so much I want to even get go, into. Go, man, this. go. Fuck it, we'll just go get into it. Um, <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about like our weekends and You're all that good, shit later bro. on. Because this is like something I'm, I'm really passionate. <laughs> so, point. so pretty much for me and Ant, we um, we pretty much just met at um at a uh, shout out to the Goodwill Outlets. 
I mean, shit, I don't like gatekeeping shit. So, like, I know some people, like, some people be like, they're a little um, hesitant. Well, I'm definitely going to ask shit. you about gatekeeping and stuff. But, um, yeah. yeah, no, Ann and I, we just met at, we go to Goodwill Outlets pretty much all the time. Mm-hmm. I'm not there as much as, like, him and, and Ruben and uh, the other guys I see out there because they're, like, they're they're really dedicated. I probably go two, three times a week. Right. But from the two, three times a week, um, before I even moved to Jersey, um, when I was working corporate in the city, um, before I started, like, uh, trying to do this for reselling full time, I would just go there just to, you know, see what's up, see mm-hmm. how I could get product. And I would just see, like, Ant there. Um, I started going more often and, um, you know, just started saying what's up to me. Right. Started saying, you know, uh, exchange IGs, you know what I'm saying? Started telling me about, you know, the different pop-ups they're doing. And mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just always, like, really genuine and just, like wanted to talk to everybody and just anybody who was just like genuine and like what they did they just fuck with each other you know what i'm saying i love that man yeah no i think that's amazing and like yeah it just led to it's it's uh you know you got there's either two ways to go about it in that place or wherever you're you're at sourcing clothes because there's always going to be competitors there's always going to be sharks um you know it's you can either take that competitiveness and kind of make it ugly or you just kind of play the gray area and be open mm-hmm. to stuff, you know, like, and there's nothing wrong with being nice to people at all. Um, at all, you know, um, that, that the whole idea of community needs more of that. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I don't think there's enough, you know, there particularly okay. because everyone, again, everyone is, ready to jump on the next man's toes yeah, quick it's definitely a lot of ego involved it's know. a lot of ego um a whole lot of ego definitely ego in that field yeah I you know and that. i i'm no different you know i've kind of i, I can say i fell under that umbrella i feel like you have to have an ego in that, in that type of field no yeah to it's some like it's extent healthy. in any field do you in any field i think ego is good but i feel like um i mean it's confidence you know yeah, you know it's, exactly it's people yeah, yeah. say go oh, you have a big ego or, you know, it's like, well, I'm just very confident. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm, I've been doing this a long time. I know what I'm doing. I know how to navigate. Right. Um, I know how to work with the cars that I'm dealt with, you know, and I'm able to kind of hustle that, mm. you know, from different points, mm-hmm. you know, and that means working with other sellers, other people that are there and bartering, mm. you know, it, it, it's, it, it breaks down to a whole, like, psychological thing yeah it, when you say like even like talk about bartering and even when you're talking about some of like ruben's uh just uh just beliefs and, and sayings it, it kind of brings me back to like really just the basics basics of just like very basic just human shit like mm-hmm. yeah just being a regular you human being like yeah okay we have a product uh, i mean we're trying to look for materials product inventory whatever you want to call it you know what i'm saying like each of us have different resources. Mm-hmm. We each have different knowledge. We each can bring something to the table and just like, all right, why not just work together, you know, collaborate on certain things, you know, get money together, help each other out. Because I'm not even going to lie, like, shadows to Ruby. I know he's not here or whatnot. Shouts but um, I will say the first time I even went to the Goodwill Outlets, I was like, like I said, I was just like watching. And I remember Ruben was the first person. I'm like, yo, am I allowed to touch things? He's like, nah, don't touch. Like, just walk around just look around you know what i'm saying always like yeah you know what i'm saying and i'm just like yo like that's even fire that somebody is just even willing to just stop yeah. and just be like all right this is how you even do it you know what right I'm saying? just to put all ego aside but um yo i even want to know how did you, how did you even get into i don't want to say resell yeah reselling just fashion just going to thrift stores like how'd you even uh so it goes back uh, it's a long story i know it's probably long because i know everybody has that like how i got (laughs) into the fashion world but um it was might have been like 13 14 years ago okay um you know it was one of those things i graduated high school it went to bergen community for a year i had nothing going for me I did, but it wasn't really legal. Something that so you wanted to touch I it. couldn't. It's not something <laughs> that I could. I think I got what you could, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I just needed to figure something out, right? I mm-hmm. needed to commit to something okay. because if there's one thing that I hate to do is to commit, which is why I'm never mm-hmm. in a relationship. Okay. Uh, commitment oh. okay. kind of we'll scares me. Too. Yeah, it, it wow. scares me. It scares me to death. But 
the only person that could disappoint me in this situation is myself. Exactly. So if I make a commitment to myself and I disappoint myself, that's on me. Of course. Yep. Um, and uh, are you a sports person? Were you like uh, into sports growing up? Not really. I was always into music. Okay. okay. Um, I always appreciate skateboarding was never a skateboarder like growing up i was very big on you know the tony hawk games yeah, yeah, and yeah. the little tech decks and i had jankos and i had the arizona convertible pants um you know kind of it's funny because it's today's trends yeah you yeah, know trends, yeah. was really how i was dressing as a kid yeah yeah um but Psych- uh psychologically like because it makes me think like i feel like even what we do it, it's it's a lot of just depending on yourself and yeah. just like doing for yourself. So and like it's very interesting. Just uh, even when people say like I'm into like skateboard because I, I I'm into I've been skateboarding for like ten plus years too. Mm-hmm. And it's like one of those things where it's like not really a team sport, but it's just like you're right. you're, you're practicing yourself. You're trying to get things done yourself. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Even when you say you're scared of commitment, it just brought me back to like oh that's interesting. You know just so the mind state. Right. It, well, because I have to gear up for that Mm. you know it's a transition in my life like Mm -hmm. well this is what i'm putting a lot of my time and my effort into so this is what's important now this is my priority uh Uh, and i was living at home going to school took advantage of that so i interned for a few years for free pattern maker fashion designer fashion house yada 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 um and then I ended up going to FIT, you know, started mm. working retail. Okay. Uh, did all these cool things up until that point. And then when I graduated, um, went back to working retail. Mm. Where did I work at? Netta Porter, Mr. Porter. Uh, so I was going okay. up that alley, okay. yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, I was getting very familiar with the camera, a lot of product styling Mm. because I was doing it on my own already because I was designing my own pieces, putting it up on Instagram, you know, renting Canon, whatever the, the models are. Um, and just taking my own product shots. You know, I've made my own portfolio. Okay. Just using the, the ground, you know, the concrete ground, you know, just because it it looked aesthetically pleasing. Right. Okay. Um, but you you was building up like your portfolio and your experiences, like, prior to even like jumping into the field. oh yeah yeah no i it, it, there was one thing that i wanted more than anything was to be able to say that i know the f i'm doing what you're doing you yeah. know yeah. i know what i'm talking about you know my yeah. my senses are on high alert mm. you know okay. the, just by feeling the cotton okay. i don't even have to look at it mm. you know just by feeling the certain cotton, i could tell you you know uh, French Terry, if it's if it's good quality, mm-hmm. you know, I just mm-hmm. visually I could tell you, oh man, that ribbing looks really good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. <laughs> that cuff looks really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the basics. Right, the basics. the basics. Um, and it was very important for me. But you know, at Netta Porter, Mister Porter, that was kind of where it, things got difficult because I thought I found something where I could actually develop my skills okay. in. But it's another long story how I got fired. Um, but they wouldn't let me, they, there was no room for me to grow in to that grow. place. Yeah. Okay. And that, that was an issue with me. Yep. And I took it very personally because, um, that Michael Jordan meme. Yeah, <laughs> man. It, well, I did because, you know, I, I went, I tried, a, I tried very hard yeah, and yeah. there was nobody, um, I, again, the ego, yeah, but yeah. this is just my confidence speaking. Yeah. You know, there was no one that had a better portfolio in any of those interviews than me. Right. Um, And uh, it it gets really messed up because Netta Porter's policy is if you're an internal employee and you go for a job, uh, another job, Mm -hmm. someone's supposed to tell you why you didn't get the job. Job. Okay. So I went on three interviews over the course of like six to eight months, just trying to get myself into a better position. And, uh, I annoyed them so much that they fired <laughs> because you? the first two times they want to do it. Okay. And then it was the third time that really, I forgot what I did that really like hit them. Yeah. Um, and verbatim HR told me you're, you're overly ambitious. Whoa. I'm like, 
I was like, just how about that to, even, how does that even make sense? I was sense? just about to say, I feel like that's a thing. Like, some jobs don't, like, overqualify and I'm, people. I'm, and I, and, and yeah, I It makes swear. no sense to and, me. Well, I'm, oh, that's such a deep, oh, my God. It's so crazy <laughs> that Ant even said that because, like, we're kind of similar because I literally, my <laughs> path is literally almost identical to, like, what you're even saying. Every single thing you're saying is, like, very identical. And even, like, to where you were at corporate-wise and what even happened. And I feel like, when people, when corporate kind of see um, overly ambitious, as they like to call it, or people who actually, like, care about what they're doing and who could maybe implement change within their culture or their company, it kind of scares a lot of, like, companies. People well, like that. It doesn't scare the company. It scares your bosses because you're going to, you're, if. Challenging if their you, position. Right. You, correct. You're going to start challenging them. Yep. And your opinion becomes more valuable than theirs. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And. Especially if you know what you're talking Correct. about. Correct. And they can't have they can't let that happen. Yeah. This one, you have the senior product stylist. No, she just had a kid. She's very comfortable in, mm. in her position mm-hmm. and what she's getting paid. So she has no intention of leaving. That part what too. so there's things like that. Yeah. You know, and you have a guy like me who just walks in there, I have little to no responsibilities, mm. you know, as far as being maintenance life maintenance yeah, you yeah. know like i'm very i'm very low maintenance person yeah the upside uh, is very like high you because know again saying? that commitment yeah, yeah i'm yeah. very committed to my goal yeah. right um so therefore everything else doesn't i don't want to say it doesn't matter but it's just not important mm-hmm. um so it's a funny story because after that happened with hr um i didn't go back to work i just stopped showing up Okay. I was like, you know what? I'm not dealing with this. I'm like, that was ridiculous. Nah, so I'm still using my company discount. At the time, it was like 50% <laughs> off. All right. So That's hard. I'm still, uh, Allegedly, I don't want to please. I don't want to incriminate nobody on this podcast. Please. Well, that's why they fired me. Okay. <laughs> so this is all set. Okay. Oh, so they found out already. Okay. Okay. Right. So yeah. I, that's the main reason why I got fired. Good. I want to so, be like DJ Vlad. Just, I don't want your nah, company to be like. <laughs> nah. They, they, they could. Yo, you'll be, so, yo, I've I'm, learned. You'll be surprised. A lot of these could, yo, there's technology that, like, will alert certain systems if you even mention a name. Like, these come, I don't know how big. Well, because it's true. I'm not it's, saying a lie. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. there's not one lie that I told. Like, Everything yeah, yeah. is a fact. Okay. Mm-hmm. I respect Human that. resources. Literally, I forgot what her name was. And I'm telling you, I went on three interviews. You could, cl- they could check me. They could check all that. Right. Uh, she told me I was overly ambitious. The third That's time. Wild, the bro. first two times I didn't get an answer. It's in their uh, their whatever their handbook yeah. of rules, you know. Because like you're overly ambitious, like this guy's qualified and stuff. But like, damn, I don't see this guy working here for that long. And it's like we don't really want that person not coming. Because like in a in in the real world, if it, if I had it my way, I would have worked the ranks up, ended up in New York, Facts. you know, with the people that are doing the editorials. Because that's what I really what love. Really do. I exactly. really loved reading those articles. Right. You know, the the small little when they interview this person or interview that person. I love that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but so I ended up still using my discount. Oh. It was like two weeks down the line and I made a huge order. Cause again, I'm getting like 40, 50 percent off. Course, I'm calling yeah. all my friends. What do you want? You're hustling, like, right? Really? Like this, this is a, the train's about to stop. Yep, so let's uh, get it. Why? So got it. That's a fact. I ended dude. up going there, and um, I went to go pick up my order. HR was waiting for me That's after crazy. I checked out, and um, you know, it was just one of those things. Like, where have you been? You haven't mm. been here in two weeks. I'm okay. like, I don't know. You know, I was just being a jerk off about it. Of course. Yeah, you yeah. know, um, and it overall just came down to me just kind of saying like, oh, you know, I must have been overly ambitious. Mm. You know, <laughs> uh, I forgot how the conversation went, but it ended up me just getting fired. Well, it was like, well, you know, you're not allowed to use your discount because you're fired. I'm like, all right, well, I'm leaving with the stuff and I just, won't, I, pay for I, it. I just won't come back. Um, and so that's how that ended. So so after that, um, but this was a transition phase now oh, because okay. Okay. now I I've been doing the thrifting stuff for a while, getting more familiar. But I'm only getting the stuff that I want, okay. right? I'm not looking to sell stuff to make money. But this was my introduction to the thrift world, um, in a different sense because I would still go there. I would still go to the Udelcos and mm-hmm. this, that, and the third years prior. Okay. Um. But now it's okay. 
what am I going to do now? Like, am I going to continue to work for people like this or am I going to start figuring something out here? Right? I was just going to ask, like, what made you like, like, because you could have been like, damn, uh, like, I could just try to find another company who maybe are yeah. more aligned with my visions. But mm-hmm. like, what made you just like, what the, was that the last kind of the straw? Like, what sparked you to like, want to be more like entrepreneur? Uh, it, well, that was, yourself? it was just the idea that you were just getting, I know that I'm good and these okay. people hired me because I'm too good mm-hmm. um for whatever they think i'm too good for because mm-hmm. okay. i'm not gonna sit here and say i'm the best i'm better than this person but i know amongst that group of people like you really you not, you're me. not yeah you're you not gonna it, yeah. you, you know you're not gonna pick me okay yeah. fine um so that really gave me the confidence to say like you know i could do this by myself mm. like i don't need these people okay. like i don't need these people that are okay with their life like this so Ended up getting a part-time gig with a startup company. Uh, they made eyewear. Okay. Um, so I was doing the product styling there. And the thing, so pretty much what I was able to do, he wanted. Because now he had all these roles in one, in one person. You got the product stylist, you have the photographer, mm-hmm. and the editor. So I'm doing all of these things. Okay. I'm doing all of this stuff. Um, so it was fun. It was fun at first because I'm like, man, I could really take advantage of this yep. right um but again it's part-time so if you know anything about a startup company the work stops at some point mm. you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. uh or, sl- yeah, or you slows know. down yeah, yeah. you know he sent me to china it was oh, really wow. cool yeah so yeah. he okay, really great guy uh iran really nice guy Re- but again now it goes back to s- being with someone that wants this wants me to succeed mm. you know He's watching me do what I do. I'm, I'm not giving any backlash. But now I'm transitioning into the whole reselling thing. Okay. Now I'm getting now because now I'm getting a little deeper in there. You know, I don't have I have a small apartment. So I go to him. I'm like, hey, do you think uh, I could start keeping some stuff here? He's like, yeah, no problem. You mu- use as much space as you want. Mm, and he had hard. a massive warehouse. Oh, wow, so hard. I didn't I don't take things for granted. You know, uh, I really, I try not to at least. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I didn't take that for granted. You yeah, know, I just yeah. went gung ho. Um, and I, a, you took advantage of his resources and yeah, the connections yeah. you built. So I had so much stuff. Yeah. And I wasn't, this was five, six years ago. So the market was completely different, different. than what it is right now. For a sure lot of different. the stuff that you can sell for 50 to 70, 80 bucks. You, you'd be lucky if you got $10, $15. Yeah. You yeah. know, I remember going to Unique one day and um, getting a um, Blood from a Stone, Stone Cold Steve Austin shirt. Okay. Um, it was, it's a great tee. Mm-hmm. It was, but That's I resonated tea. with that hard because I had that tee as a kid. Mm-hmm. And I found it, paid three bucks, and I remember looking it up on eBay and the comps were like fifteen dollars, mm. and I'm like, man, I'm not selling this for fifteen dollars. Yeah. This is worth way more to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's where that retained value started. To, that's really where it started with that tea. I was okay. like, I'm not selling. So started building that archive, that collection, and you know, you fast forward to a year ago, they were selling for seven to eight hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. You know, like that's nuts. Yeah. You know? But whatever. You know, just like the stock market, man. Yeah, like, it's it's. it's it, I mean, it is. It literally is. Yeah, like it's, 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 it's a resource. It's gold, like a material. You might have gold. The price might go up and down. So yeah. I wasn't gonna sell all of this stuff that I was sourcing uh, for cheap. Mm-hmm. I ended up just hoarding it in his warehouse for mm-hmm. like two or three years, and then the outlet opened, and then it became a whole nother whole nother experience. It's experience because it it altered a lot of people's lives. Because people yes. were able to, to, to do this full time. Um, do you think the outlet? Do, do you think in your experience that, well, at least in this area, at least from your experience, do you think uh, you saw an influx of just um, just people doing it themselves? When, once more outlets, Goodwill outlets, and bins started to open up and become more popularized, because that's a big thing. And I want to talk about gatekeeping. Um, I want to say, shit. A little bit before the pan, even like a few years before the pandemic, like um, I know I was really like big on on YouTube, just like searching different like yeah. resellers on YouTube. Yeah. There's there's a, there's a bunch. I know Dante's not like 
First of all, he's not like into any of this stuff. So like, <laughs> I hope this is not too boring for you, no, bro. I'm very, I'm learning over here, bro. I'm learning. Okay, I love good. vintage stuff. You actually got me into appreciating vintage. Okay, stuff, good. Honestly. Yeah, we're sickos. Like, man. um, completely, completely <laughs> different type of vintage. But like, you know, I'm a gamer, right? Yeah. So I recently found my old PlayStation and my Sega Genesis. So I found a whole bunch of like games that I have, have that I had when I was younger. Yeah, yeah. And in New Mexico. We went to a thrift shop because Solange was trying to find, like, cowboy boots and stuff. Yeah, so yeah. we went to a whole bunch of thrift stores out there. They have a whole bunch of New Mexico. And they had a section of, like, old video games. And so I was thinking, like, yo, I low-key want to start collecting, like, old video games because I sometimes have old – I have I have a lot of old systems. Yeah, and I yeah, want to yeah. see, like – I wonder how much some of these games go for oh, nowadays. Yeah. You'll so, be surprised, bro. So I'm actually getting started slowly okay. getting into it, man. That's I just what's need, up. need more information. But continue. That's My what's bad. up. No, I just felt like uh, before people start, like, well, really – it, it was really, um, on YouTube, it was a big thing of, like, just people showing off, like, their finds, you know, yes, their collection yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever. And, like, more people just started to become more curious, of course. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel like it was a big thing with people, like, gatekeeping a lot of the places they were getting their product for or from. And um, up here, like, a Goodwill outlet, a really large Goodwill outlet open. And um, it was kind of a thing where a lot of people were getting their product from there, but... Like, it was the thing where people, like, really wanted to, like, be low-key and, like, not want to spread the information. Um, of course. That's it's, it's instinct. Yeah. It's, you know, like. Yeah, you find something good. You don't yeah. want everybody. You don't tell people about it. I, I can see why they do it. How do you feel about that, though? Like, uh, I mean, I understand both sides of the fence here. Yeah. But I'm at the point where it's like, if you're good at it, you're going to do well no matter what. Um, because it's rough. You know, the, the trenches are rough, man. Yeah. You know, you got to deal. Again, it's entry level. So anyone yeah. can walk in there. Some, some schmagoo, like from, you know, an hour away. <laughs> yeah, literally, if you if you and, walk and, past it, you can go inside of it. It's not like you right, get a right. license right to off, go Right there. off the highway. It's yeah. like, oh, wow, I seen this sign. So I just came in here. I've never been here before. Whoa, look at the next thing you know. This guy found a Nirvana tee. First time, first yeah. bin he's ever $1, hit. $1,000 t-shirt. And, now, now oh, okay. and that's how okay, people get, get hooked. Yes, okay. Uh, and now, no, like that, some people take it. Oh, man, I've seen it. I've seen so many different. I'm sure you've like, seen a lot. I've seen a lot. So there's been the people that is cool. That's like, oh, you know, it's just got lucky. You know, then the other people, they start coming every day, mm. you know, and then mm. they're getting a little more, you know, pushy. Mm. Wow. You know, they're, they're, you know, you're seeing a difference in how they're interacting with people. They're speaking less to people. Mm. You know, they're giving more attitude here okay. and there. And that's where issues come about. Right. Okay. okay. So instead of being self-aware and being like, you know what, I got lucky. I don't really know much, but I got a really good item. Right. Like that person is walking in there like King Kong. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> no. It's really easy to like wow. get that feeling. Because, bro, imagine like you're, you're paying maybe like essentially less than a dollar for a shirt. Essentially. And let's say a shirt is worth 500 600 a hundred dollars yeah, like, and it's not common it's not like this is a common thing but it, it it's funny a lot of the regulars know that when there's a new face around uh there's always that new big that beginner's luck you know uh, yeah. there's the, that yeah. that beginner's luck is there's i don't there's that shit is so real man like i don't even know how to go about it saying it like because that shit is just i don't know man some mystical shit because right. it's like some like I said, some new guy just walks in and just ends up getting the best piece. And it's like, fuck, what yeah. the fuck? This guy just walked in here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yo, I, 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 I really want to know, like, what keeps you in the, like, because, I mean, I know you do, like, go out often. And you're, you're out here, like, pretty much in the trenches, as you like to say, pretty frequently. But, like, what makes you, like, kind of sane and be like, okay, I need to, like, relax and not trying to be too, too involved in just getting product. Um, well, there's a few things, uh, but the ones that I would say are important is to have other, res other sources. Mm, you okay. need other sources. Not just um, relying on just one yeah, place. Yeah, that place can get a little too crazy, man. You know, it's just too much. Yeah. You know, I got to leave. Yeah. I don't, you know, they, I can't spend the whole day there. You know, hearing the conversations that some people have, it's just mm. like, what are you guys doing here? Yeah. You know, you have the women that are. And listen, I, I'm not trying to talk yeah, shit. Yeah, no disrespect to anybody. Yeah, but like, 
some of these people bring their kids. They're dropping their kids on their on their head on a concrete. Floor. I've seen it. I swear to God, yeah. there was a kid jumping around in the car. Yeah, I'm like that. Kid. That kid is gonna fall out of that car, and next thing you know, his heavy ass head just no. topples right out of that car, straight into the concrete. And all you heard was that uh. boom. Like, what was the parent doing? She was too focused trying on trying to get clothes. Too focused on getting the clothes, and it's stuff like that that irritates me because it's like dude what are you doing yeah. like, i don't know their situation you know i don't know if she's here but like you got to figure something out there yeah you know like that that's this it's not an environment for children and people bring children there still and they're newborns nope. uh, and that's uh, i think that's crazy like wow. there's yeah, there's, no shade no shade to shorty no shade <laughs> no shade to no shorty. shade because i really do i feel like I, like it's kind of nuts <laughs> No, no, that is not. No, that would have really been people bring like, I know what I mean. like no shade to the baby either, like but I hear I, I, I understand like every day, like up in the like with hundreds of people, like bumping and stuff, and yeah, it's heck. You don't think bro. that's like a tactic? It's no, no, nah. nah, man. Nah. I think she just not, loves it. Like, it's I, I, you know I think it's pretty dumb. Um, I don't think it's. I, I think uh, they shouldn't do it. Right. You know, no, I, like, agree. I think there was another other day. There was a woman who had her child on her chest as she's picking. So, like, she's going down and the baby is going like inhaling old. Clothes. Yeah. And it's like, like this is close from you like don't know this. What. Is, I was like, this is kind of weird. I see, you yeah. know, like this is strange. You know, I might elbow this baby right now. Exactly. You know, I don't want to do that. Yeah, so I just exactly. go to another area, yeah. Yeah. you know, because I don't want to be around this woman. Um, if it is tactics, like, I don't know, it's not really the best tactic. Not at all. Um, not at all. But, yeah, no, uh, people are strange in there, man. You, you see so many types of characters in there. Uh, you just don't know who's who, you know? Like, so you just mind your business. Can I throw a random question at yeah, you? Yeah. How do you feel about people who say um, uh, resellers who get uh, clothing for cheap and resell them for uh, more expensive? Um, what do you what do you say to people who say like you're just taking resources away from oh the less privileged the less privileged um, I just want to throw out some random questions. That's uh, I mean it's a good question because it is a good question. Like what do I say? I say, well, you had your chance, you know, because okay. I, I there's no love lost here. Okay. You know, um, but that's also the same reason why these stores are competing. Mm. You know, you go to the value villages and the savers and stuff like that, and you see a Carhartt for 50, 60 bucks. It's exactly what I would sell it for. Yeah. You know, like a Disney little shitter yeah. that I would right. sell for 25. They're asking 30. Mm. A, large you know? co- a larger company, a bigger company. Right. So they're, they're competing. You know, they, they know what's happening. You know, yeah, they right. Google image stuff. Yeah. You know, they pretty, like, there's, I'm not saying anything that people don't already know. Mm. Um, like two, three years ago when it was a new thing, like, yeah, it was different. But now everybody knows. So if mm-hmm. you get upset, it's like, dude, come on. Like, yeah, yeah. What, like, you got to adapt. I think people who think like that are, first of all, I don't want to disrespect, <laughs> but y'all are stupid because, like, there's so much even just product and shit there's in the world. Product, there's, like, an overproduction so of clothes. these things. There's a lot of like, clothes. Yeah. yeah there's there's enough, a lot of clothes. There's more than enough for everybody to get stupid. everything they need and That's make their bread. That's a stupid critique, yeah. yeah. That's really uh, stupid. But yeah, no, there, there's an abundance it's of abundance. clothing. It's too Espe- much Especially shit. depending on what city you come from. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. You know, there's some cities that have multiple outlets yeah. in, in a 20-mile radius. Mm-hmm. You know, so just imagine how much clothes they have. Yeah. Um, so it, it's... Uh, but the gatekeeping thing, man, like, uh, you know, it's just... Or just all of that. It's, it's kind of hard to gatekeep nowadays. Like with technology, nowadays, exactly. that's, that's why it's, it's you can't it's gatekeep. So hard. You could have gatekeep maybe in the early two thousands when you know it's just forms and shit, and you're just like. I mean, yeah. there's been times because you know you know you meet people. This person's doing that, and this person's doing this, mm-hmm. and this person got interviewed here. So everyone's on the come up, right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I'm no different. So I'm trying to do shit, trying to make shit happen. Mm-hmm. Um, but you have other people who are doing these interviews and saying, oh, you know bins this or you know whatever stores they go to Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you come you go to wherever you go with your peers the other sharks and Mm -hmm. like oh you you 
you saw they talk about the Goodwill. Yeah. Like, oh, now everyone's going to come here. Yeah, yeah. I was like, man, uh, you don't get out of here with that. Exactly. People think like that. No, people like seriously <laughs> think crazy. like that, bro. It's like, oh, now everyone's going to come here. I'm like, everyone's been coming here already. <laughs> like, there's Literally. no difference. This art, this interview article is not going to change anything. If Literally. you're good at what you do, you're still going to do mm. well. Mm. Doesn't matter. Yes. Um, it, it might not be the stuff that you want, but if you are determined to make money, if there's a will, there's a way. Okay. You know? Okay. So, so, you, so it seems like you're pretty much just like, I mean, you're confident in just like your ability to just source and your knowledge of everything. So you're saying you just like don't focus on one thing. You try to just bounce around whatever uh, you feel good yeah. about. Like, oh, 100%. You know, okay. Yeah. You don't, no. you don't ever feel too much pressure of just like, damn, I got it. Like, I know it can be an addiction to people just feeling the pressure of just like, nah, I don't want to miss. I can't miss this. Like, somebody who's going to take it, I, I got to be there so every it, time. It's a, that's a sticky one because you can't be everywhere at the same at time, the same right? Time. Like, mm-hmm. there's been times when I left the Goodwill to go to another place or I left that place to go to another place. Mm-hmm. And it was the best decision that I could have made. Mm, for sure, right? yes. Because it's like, oh, my God. God, I can't believe I just found this. Shout out to American right. Thrift. I didn't had that <laughs> countless times from leaving Goodwill to go to American Thrift. Uh, to buy some. Yes. Because, you know, again, if you go to the Goodwill, like, it's rough, man. Like, you, be, you yeah. have to have thick skin. You have to take an elbow. You have to be able to take a shirt to the elbow. face. And it's without, tiring. Yo, that shit is, like, tiring. Yeah, man, like, it, you'll leave mentally, there feeling drained. It's mentally exhausting, yeah. you know, because in hindsight, it's wow. kind of belittling. But, like, it's not intentional. <sighs> yeah. But people mm. are trying to get it. And again, they don't give a fuck what you got yeah. because. Oh, sorry if I. I'm, no, no, you're good. Trust me, we're good. <laughs> we're good. No, you know uh, the shit we talk about on this part. Uh, yeah, no, we're good. We're good. You know, they don't give a fuck what you got because okay. yeah. all that matters is what they got. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, so if you found something good, it could, you know, it, it could go either way. But that's why I think it's cool how like people like you, Ruben, and the people like other people who other resellers i can't speak for everybody especially like the older and like uh older people and uh let's say the different types of people who come but at least like the younger resellers i see mm-hmm. they make it a point to at least like communicate with each other and help each other out uh, which is dope because i don't know if it's like that every uh, i do be seeing videos on youtube and it does seem like that's a common thing with like within well, a the resell community the, the newer generation is a little different maybe it's a little like different our, than the newer ones. i'm I'm born in 89, so, like, a lot of the pickers, I guess, that are around my age. That was, like, their hobby prior it's, it's most, not, most of the time. It's not, definitely not looked at the same. Yeah. You know, definitely more, I don't want to say frowned upon, but, you know, it's very clickety. You know, this person deals with this person, yeah. and this person deals with that person. So, yeah. it's hard sometimes, because yeah. I'm a barterer. I am heavy on the bartering. Okay. If I know... I have something for everybody. If you got something that I want, I guarantee right. you I have something that you want. Mm. And if you come check me out, you're probably going to end up Buy spending something. money yeah. mm. because you're not going to realize how much I had that you wanted. Right. You know, so and that's how it turns out, you know, so and it's 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 uh, it sucks when I can't have those relationships with people yeah, because, yeah. well, this person. Feels doesn't some, like, feel it, some type of way because they're cool with that person because, who might not or, like that yeah, person. It's it's always like, some, man, some I don't, I don't like you because you're good at what you do, and yeah. I can't do that. That's uh, honestly, that's how I look at it sometimes. Yeah. Right. You know that it's just a little bit of envy. You know, like oh, yeah. man, why? I, I could do that, mm. but I, but you ain't. But you're not, I yeah. am. Yeah. Exactly. You know, I, I, I don't. I'm not talking. I'm doing the walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm fucking dancing. Hey. You know, I respect um, that. That's why I like I really do respect because y'all just I'll just do it. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, and that's cause when when it all boils down, it's about who's doing it. Who's actually right. Just doing the work. Are you doing it? Making Good. The relationships. If, Not right. even just doing the work, but I'm starting to also realize and just any field of life. It's like you said, uh, kind of just clicking up and just staying together. It's really a big part. It's just the relationships, the people you meet. Yeah. How you can benefit each other like how i might have this for you uh, you can you have that for me yeah and just how you could mutually just benefit from something well, it, and i'm i try not to be greedy mm-hmm. especially now that i've been doing it a while uh because again it, it, well i don't think i said this before but most of my good stuff doesn't come from the goodwill anymore mm. from other sources it comes from other sources you, yeah. so like so when people talk about it, I was like, I don't care because mm. most of my stuff doesn't come from like a lot of it does like like the fillers like mm-hmm. the 
I don't want to say the garbage, but like I you know, this you. the the not so fun stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You know, yeah, um, I hear that because I might get something, but again, you're in a pool full of sharks, man, and everybody wants the same stuff. So yep. like, it's it's like playing the lottery. Yeah, yeah. you know, um, and that day might be your day. Okay, I can't call it, but no matter what, like. People will always get upset at the gatekeeping thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Always. That's never going to stop. But it's stuff like that that kind of keeps me grounded. Okay. You know, knowing, being aware that it is entry level, that anyone can just walk through that door and get that Nirvana that's shirt that I was just saying. You know, like. Yeah, indeed. Because that, that's very humbling. You yeah. know, what's, what makes it worse is if you were right next to the guy. <laughs> when, he, when he pulls it, it's like, ah. God, yeah. I, I might just walk out. That I might just go home. Like you know what? Yeah, yeah. But You're really defeated after that. It's it's that rough. It's discouraging. Um, um, so there's many factors in that place. So. Question, uh-huh. um, because I just like to pick people's brain about this. Because sure, do you take vacation? <laughs> good. That's a good question. Uh, not really. No. Okay. I um, I, you're gonna laugh when I say this. I kind of look at my life as a vacation. Um, because I do what I want. I do it when I want to do it. True. Pretty much I do what I, the only person that I'm scared of is the IRS taxes. Right. Outside of that, I I don't have any, you know, like I don't have anyone telling me I got to be up to do this. Mm. I don't got a girl like, um, you know, people say, Oh, you don't got family. I'm like, I'm not really close with my family, Mm. you know? Um, and I'm not going to get into that conversation because it, it goes it's, it's pretty deep. 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 You know, it's deep. deep. Yeah. But yeah. I'll tell you one thing, like maybe six, seven years ago I was doing and this is me touching, getting my feet wet. Mm-hmm. I was doing a art. I did an art installation at the art factory. Mm-hmm. Shout out to the art factory. We yeah. just had a few, uh, a few people from the art factory. Yeah. Nah, man. Oh, we uh, we do the pop up there yep. uh, a few times a year. So it was always love over there. Yeah. But um, I had a really sick installation you know because i'm very influenced by blue collar stuff okay so you know 40s 50s 60s type whatever okay so i had a really nice rack full of levi's and my reworked levi's Mm -hmm. and the whole setup was just really nice because it kind of looked like a mm, like early 50s 60s setup of what could have been a Levi's installation back then or advertisement. You know, it was just very Western how I was able to decorate it. It looked really nice. And uh, my dad came and, you know, it was just one of those things where he's like, after everything, he was like, so when are you going to get a real job? Yep. Mm. Yeah. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I hear that, bro. And it was always, you know, my parents are from South America, so they don't really, you know, if I told them that I'd, took this shirt from American thrift. I, I mean, I was there this morning, so I got a few things, but you know, I'll say like, Oh, you know, I got this gap linen shirt. So nice. I paid eight bucks and I'm going to sell this for $50. What? You're like, how? Yeah. No, get a job. What's wrong with you? Exactly. Go get insurance. Yeah, yeah. Get a job. with insurance. I'm like, so that's really, I'm not going to say that was, that's the issue, but like, yeah, just a, to give you an idea, true. That's yeah. a deep no, yeah, just to that, give bro. you the idea. Yeah. So I get that, bro. in order for me to succeed, I need to eliminate anything that is not in the way of that. Yeah. Trying to get me to that point. So, what, um, and I, again, commitment, very committed to this. Yeah. It doesn't matter who you are. I will cut you off with an instant. No problem. So when's the last time you were close to <laughs> having <laughs> something then? Huh? When was the last time you was close to having, like, a partner and ah, it was, uh, mixing them into that commitment? So, and it's funny because she probably worked just as much as I did. Mm. And the reason how we met was very... Organic? Sh- organic, yeah, because we were working at American Apparel. Uh, shout out to Sydney. She's fucking, she's, a, she's phenomenal. She, she works at the Apollo now mm-hmm. uh, doing the social media managing and stuff like that. So, nice. Um, <laughs> You know, it's just very, oh, man, she's just a great person. I don't even know where to start. But uh, we just always were working, you know, because she was trying to do her own thing. She, We both worked at the retail spot, but we were also outside doing, doing other stuff. Doing your own shit, yeah. You yeah. know, and we ended up meeting there 
uh, got acquainted and, you know, just one thing led to another. Yep. And next thing you know, I'm, I'm staying with her for a while in Harlem. And it was a great experience. You know, I learned a lot from that. Mm. Being is like, what I learned is that, you know, I just need to, cause I can't, I can't give her what she wanted, which was time. time you know, yeah. like I, she needs time. She needs, she wants to be with me. Like, yeah, you know, not yeah. that I don't want to be with her, and but that's like normal, like women right, shit. It, it's, it's know? fine. It's yeah. completely understanding, but like, I can't give that to you. I'm not the person to do that. And I like this very selfish of me because of the lifestyle that you live. You think because of the lifestyle. Again, I made this commitment with myself. I'm not going to stop until I get to this point. Um, you know, I, I just want it. You know, I, I know what I want and I know what I can't do. Therefore, I'm not going to drag you along knowing, you know, you're a good person. Why would I do that to you? You know, you're my friend. Like, yeah. I would never do that. Um, do you feel like that can hold you back being so passionate and like into just oh absolutely just yeah 100 yeah. percent. so many people have told me that um i don't think twice about it but uh, like do you ever think you're willing to make that trade-off for like personal relationships and shit like that down the line yeah absolutely down the line but not right now no i get it you know once that. i'm more established and grounded when you get to that point and you're yeah, like, you're Damn, like I'm, i'll I'm know here. like you know i'll know like right hmm. now i'm working i work and the thing about reselling, right? People think it's so easy. That shit is not. That shit is not easy. It's I mean, not easy. Not it's easy bro. The, the concept is easy. Yes. But the Executing actual, the, right? The actual doing yeah. is what's rough, right? Yeah. Because you're looking at 12, 14 hour days, if that. Yeah. You know, yeah. like maybe a little more. Yeah. You know, depending on how, how I'm feeling, because there's yeah. some more some days where I'm up until 2 a.m. Cause like I just get into the groove of taking photos and I'm like, you know what? I, I, I'm not tired. I ain't going to stop. Right. I hear you. you know? And that pile of stuff that I have to take photos of just never stops. It never stops. Never stops. Yeah. Dude, it's, it's crazy. Like I said, if you come to my apartment, dude, you, you're going to, you're going to shit yourself. I'm going to check you out pretty soon. Though. Um, I've been telling you that for two years, but, but <laughs> you know, the idea of being in a relationship is nice. Mm -hmm. You know, speaking to someone, having a partner doing stuff with that, with someone who you enjoy their company, like just even in being, enjoying their silence, their presence, yes. you know, like Heavy that's something silence. that's yes. very yeah. ideal to me, yeah. but I'm not going to, I know what I have to do in order for that to happen. And I'm just not willing to do that. You know, I'm what if just, you, what if you found somebody who's willing to wait and put up with whatever? I mean, if I had, if, if I met another woman and she was working just as much as I do, and I was like, you know what? I want to see you on Friday after six 30, because I got to check the racks and I yeah. got to do all my, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but like, this is, this goes, you know, like if I said that to the girl, she's going to be like, are you fucking serious? Yeah. It's like, depends. yo, you're obsessed. And I'm like, you know, I, I am fucking obsessed. I know. Right. Tell me something I don't know. Do you think this is all hell, like a grand <laughs> scheme of things? Like, because like I said, like my friends, like I was telling you before we started recording, my friends look at me crazy and I'm like, fam, I don't even know. Nah, like, I, I feel do. like I feel like I do an amazing job when it comes to balancing shit. But I'd be like, yo, you if do. you see how hard the, the balance, and, yeah. and it just and it, it don't even seem like it just seems like they just really just love that shit. Like, no, I mean, you know I understand saying? that when you really love something, love something, it's not work like that shit is fun. So like you can but, do that shit for hours. But is it I healthy? Get like, it. is it? Is, is it healthy? good for your, I mean, because in a way it does feed your soul because you're accomplishing stuff. Yeah. You're actually doing stuff you want. You don't look at it as, as, at as, as work, even at though it's all. exhausting. It's like times. a, it's like a never ending high. Like you always just doing yeah. it. Like I you want to keep doing like, it. How do you find that compromise? So where you're like, damn, I'm, I, I'm, so I'm not obsessing and like, I don't yeah, cut off relationships. That you do? Uh, so I, I don't, again, I don't. So opportunities is different okay. because the opportunities comes because of how obsessed I am. Right. Okay. Um, and people, well, I don't want to say people, but like, you know, store owners, people with a bigger following, a stronger influence, mm. they like that type of stuff. Yeah. You know, because they're like, man, this guy's, this guy don't give a shit. Yeah, yeah. This guy don't give a shit about nothing yep. except about what he's doing, doing, you yeah. know, and that's important to me. Yep. Um, it, you know, okay, maybe five, 10 years when I'm more, when I have my shit going and, you know, if I'm employed with a company uh, and a, in a high position, because that's kind of the goal. Like, uh, 
you know, people were like, oh, you're going to open up a store? I'm like, I don't want to open up a store. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I want to consult. Mm -hmm. I want to work with high profile people. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I want to work with product development. You know, I want to work with the textiles. I want to travel abroad. Right. You know, because um, that's what's important to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and there's, it's, we're, we're in a time where you could do anything and just kind of turn that into bigger opportunities. Indeed. And that was, again, just me and Ruben speaking. You know, like, you know, a lot of what we've been doing up until this point, selling here, selling there, it's, it's just conversations that we've had. Mm -hmm. Like, how do we, okay, how do we do this, right? How do we up the value? How do we up our quality, mm -hmm. you know, um, and make people appreciate it? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. It, Every, everything's very intentional and very planned. And correct. And I don't know if I have ADHD. Like, I've never been, but nah, like. You I, have, I feel like people who do this <laughs> have to, bro. There's no way you, you don't. There, like, it's, it's rough to kind of have me just sit put. Yeah. And kind of just like, okay, I'm not going to do anything. For... So it's hard for you to relax. Yes. It's very hard for me to relax. Oh. Uh, so I said that long answer. Yeah. But <laughs> not good. You're good. We, I'm glad we circled back. Thank you. It all, uh, it all connects. No, it all makes sense. It, it all makes sense. Trust me. I feel like it definitely all uh, makes so sense. So I can't relax. I can if I put my mind to it. But you're not happy when you, you feel like you're not happy when you're just um, relaxed. Focus, like like I said, when I say like missing, when I said missing out on opportunity, I meant opportunity as in like personal personal relationships that doesn't involve business, mm. like hangouts maybe with the homies so, or like it could be non platonic platonic like not yeah, like yeah, it don't yeah. even got to be like girlfriend wise. I'm talking about just relationships that has nothing Catching to do with up business. On your favorite so shows. I have friends like that. I have a few friends uh, that I very much love and I mm -hmm. appreciate. But, I mean, there are also some of the people that are telling, are the ones telling me, like, yo, man, you're working too much. Like, why are you, why are you always doing this? Like, <laughs> if, I'm, if, if I'm That's hanging the out with them and I'm on Facebook Marketplace, I'm like, yo, I got to run. There's these fucking Patagonia pants that I could sell for 400 What, you be and dipping it, and shit? Yeah, man, I just did. <laughs> and he's like, yo, are you serious? He's like, I respect the you hustle. Yeah, but, yeah. like, no, nah, I'm going to come right back. It's right, 15 minutes I'll be gone. Yeah, yeah. But it's stuff like wow. that that I was like, dude. It's calm, kind of love, though. Like, calm down. Yeah, like, yeah. Mm. I'm like, I can't. Yeah. I can't. The hustle don't stop. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. Like, yeah. the hustle don't stop here. And it's people like him or my other friends. Like, even my friend in L.A., my friend Mikey. He works in, um, in more of the food service thing. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, so he... It's crazy what he's doing. If I were to sit here and tell you what he's doing, it, it's no catering. Absurd. That's another. That's another. Well, it's not catering. It's okay. it's uh, catering esque. That's okay. But okay. he's more involved in product development okay. with margaritas. So him and his, hmm. he ended up moving out there and falling in with the right people. Okay. And he's a carpenter, so ah. his skills was able to bring him to a point where he got partnership mm, and nice. equity. And these little companies that hopefully ends up getting bought by Pepsi or Coca-Cola oh, wow. um, for millions of dollars. Nice. And yeah, I hope I hope you know. Um, but that's what he's doing. You mm -hmm. know, they they they're like the first people to ever put a margarita in a can or in a gun. So like you can't go to a bar and get you you could get Coke from a gun, but you can't get a margarita in a gun. And they what? have that all patented and everything. That sounds wow. wild. And yeah, it's crazy. So shout out to him, man. That's like wild. that's that's my man. <laughs> but completely different industries yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh but when i go out there because his brother cuts my hair so i'll go out there a few times a month uh, a few times a year to go see him mm -hmm. get a cut and go to rose bowl make it a whole thing okay. but i only stay for less than 72 hours oh wow, wow. Okay. i fly out saturday night it's the same thing every every time i don't stay for more than three days i fly out saturday night i get there around 10 11 and i'll leave monday night Gosh, it's not man. like it's on some vacation chill. No. Now you're just getting I'm going just, there, I'm haircut, going there. do what you gotta do, then you out. Yo, my man, it's good to see you. Let's have dinner. What? Fucking smoochy smoochy. I love yeah. you. Good to see you. Thank you for the haircut. Went to Rose Bowl, got a few things. Yeah. Uh but he's a big supporter because he's the one waking me up uh to go to Rose Bowl. It's like, yo, six AM. Yeah, yeah. We it's like, are, yeah. are we still going to Rose Bowl or yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, respect. Respect. Uh, you know, so it's 
he's the guy like, dude, why don't you just book a week? Like, just stay here for a week. You don't got to do nothing. Yeah. Like, you know, like we have everything here for you. Yeah. It's like, Literally. I, I don't want to do that. I, I got I got shit to find back home. Sorry. <laughs> wow. Uh, you know, I, I, the hustle don't stop, man. Like, yeah. and it's easy to just hang it up and go out and do that. But like, I'm, I'm out for the gusto, man. Like, I want the best. You know, the people that shop with me know I try to deliver that. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, so I have I have an expectancy from people, mm. and that's not what really motivates me. But it helps. It, it's it very definitely good, helps. Like, uh, it definitely put some pressure there you know because yeah. not so much it's just i just want to have good stuff yeah you know yo no ant is on some other i i love it because like bro i feel like people like a lot of people don't I have that mentality even, i agree nah like you <laughs> i agree like, it's so hard i feel like to even like i don't even know how like because like i said i'd be having a hard like i'm like just comparing just lives I feel like I have a hard time just, like, with my friends when it comes to things like that. And I feel like I don't go 100%. But, like, people like you, I feel like it would be Excuse 10 me. times just even harder to even just, like... Because, mm. like I said, every time I see my friends, like, my friend Dante Solante, they're like, yo, just chill out. Like, take some time for yourself. Go on vacation. Come out with yeah. us. Drink. I'm just like, no, so I that, got shit to do. It's like, funny you said that because the only reason... I took... I'm taking the day off today. I'll mm. probably end up doing some little bit of work at home. Yeah. But you was, you was about to do work. For like. the most part, well, because, like, I would have went to the city, sold some stuff mm-hmm. here and there, you know, uh, shaking and baking, baby. Like, right. I'm, I'm all about it. Like, yeah, yeah. and because it's, it's been the summertime and we've been able to get outside a little more, mm-hmm. dude, I haven't lit- I haven't taken a day off in maybe, like, two, since April. Oh, man. You know, and uh, I only take a day off because it's raining. Yeah, so, then yeah. I ain't going outside. Yeah. It's none of, what, what am I selling outside? Some wet clothes? Right. No. I got to take the day off. Uh, but I'm just about it, man. Like, you know, I, I just, I, I know what needs to be done and I know uh, I can do it. So have you ever reached a point where you felt burnt out? Yeah. Oh, 100%. If, if I'm at the Goodwill all day, every day, if I don't go anywhere else, I'm burnt out. 100%. Wow. It's happened. It's terrible. And that's why I don't stay there the whole day. Right. Fuck, I'm sorry, guys. Can you pause? What are, yeah. my, what are my good plans? Um, I always talk around this all the time. Like, I'm all for doing the grind 100%. I love it. I always just like to make sure that people just have a day and maybe two days just to be like, just like stop the people in your mind from working just for a little bit. Just like so you don't get burnt down. You just like, you know, because where you want to go is like that's the goal. But you also don't want to go there limping. You know what I'm saying? No, I, I hear you. So that's why I always like to be like, oh, make sure you like just like, I don't care if you go to the movie, you go to the bike ride, go to the gym. But as long as you do something that's like for you and like it's like clear mind from work, I'm so all you, for you it. you want to know what clears my mind? Selling. Wow. Selling. Because I love, I love talking to, I, yeah. you don't know who's who. True. You know, like I love some of the pieces that I have on my rack, right? So if someone grabs it, and it's like, oh, you know, how much, this, that, and the third. And they're thinking about it, I'm like, man, I love that piece. Yeah. You know, you should try it on. Let's see how it looks, you know. And then, you know, it starts to resonate with people, you know. And we start talking about it. We talk about how good this piece is, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, I had an air pastel vest that Ruben just absolutely loved. Dude, it was the funniest thing because he spoke about it. Like, I didn't even speak this way about it. But, like, right. anytime anyone would touch this air pastel vest, he's like, oh best look at the back it's full corduroy uh because the front the front is canvas uh, it's okay. got canvas it's got the corduroy pockets right but you don't see the whole back is corduroy mm. um and it was just so it was a beautiful piece yeah. you know just air po- 90s air pastel yeah and this is the stuff that i love i love mall brands yeah. you know a lot of people you know and this is where things get sticky at the goodwill because people almost look down on you because you like a specific brand. Like, I love Banana Republic Do stuff. They? Really? Yeah. Oh, 100%. They're like, oh, he sells Banana Republic. No. Okay. You know, or Gap. You know, like, I, I love J. I'm Crew. A, I'm a big J. Crew J. guy. Yeah. You baby. know, like Currency put me on the J. Crew many years ago. Um, but that's why I started wearing J. Crew, was because of Currency. Right. Uh, I'm like, you know what? I'm like, damn, that shit is fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, let me go over there. And lo and behold, I started shopping at. You know, start getting my jeans there. 
I think the first pair I got were the four A fours. Very underrated. Yeah. Like Banana Crew's Republic, hard. J. Crew, like Pants. The, they're hard. Dude, they're, they're, they make great stuff. Yeah, I like, used to work I, at both the of them. Very underrated, yes. The resale's not good. And I agree. Like, it's not good. Yeah. Like, I would never buy that to resell. But the stuff is still good. Yeah. You know, to still wear. People might buy yeah. it in the streets for a few bucks. You know, if you're paying two five, two to five bucks and you sell it for 15 like, that's great. It's still coming. It's still a profit. You know, like, yeah, up. man. Like, but it's small margins like that that people... Like like ugh, icky. Yeah. No people it's, don't like. I'm too good. Yeah, I'm too good for that. I'm sorry, um, but I didn't realize those people. I mean, I I don't know. I don't talk to people as much as you, but I didn't even <laughs> realize that was like they were looking down yeah. at like. I mean, it might not be a thing anymore because now that value has really skyrocketed uh, for okay. a lot of those that those is true. items. Yeah. you know, in the last uh, I want to say 18 months. Mm-hmm. So you'll see more people with 90s gap. You know, oh, like, sure. I love 90s, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, I just think, you know, again, it's essential wear. Yeah. Basic 90s essential wear. But all that shit is coming and goes. I mean, it's going to go, go up in price, yeah. down in price. It's yeah. just whatever. Comes and goes. People like you know, authentically, I, yeah. Just even talking about the Django's before. Like, I've seen Django's going for, like, five, 600 bucks. And mm. it's like, jeez, Louise, I literally used to go to JC Penny and get oh, mine. Like, so I had a few pairs, 40, you know, $50, like, yeah. crazy. Um, but yeah, like the whole layout of the game is just, it's just so up and down, yeah, yeah. you know, cause you have so many people that do it, but they all do it differently. Yep. That's what I love though, bro. Yeah. And that's why I love just even like, like seeing when you Ruben and some of the other people dudes who resell there. Cause everybody just does it a different way. Right. You know there's, there's a, there's a way, man. And, and, uh, I like it because I'm very... I don't want to say hasta diddy, mm. but like, hasta Ru- like Ruben no might be the only person that knows it because like, nah, nah, man, this don't look good. This yeah, don't yeah. look aesthetically. This don't look good. Yeah. You know, because we were talking about it last night. Like, oh, maybe we'll put two racks, two racks each instead of the because usually we'll put a rack and a table and then we'll hang stuff up. Okay. If we can't hang stuff up, I'm not I, I don't want to be there Okay. okay. Uh, because that's what Just gets people over there. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. people that's like, oh, I saw that from mm. down the street and that's right. why I came over here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, utilize the space, maximize it mm. as much as you can, For right? Sure. Um, and having this conversation with him was like, I don't think that would look good. Like four racks, I don't think it would look too good on the street. It, it almost kind of looks like a runoff. Right. You know, at least you have a rack table, rack table. Mm-hmm. Right. It's a, it's almost like a, a line dot, line dot, mm-hmm. almost like a sentence. Mm-hmm. Um, so just again aesthetically pleasing yeah. and that matters to me you know I don't want to go out there looking sloppy yeah, right. yeah, yeah. you know like perspective is very important um, especially when it comes to s- selling you know um, so but because of what we do uh, I also I too enjoy hearing the next person's you know journey you know how they get stuff off you know this person might only do ebay or this person might only do beacons closet Uh you know or Uh there's so many ways to do it it, you know and i made it a point to be like well i'm capable of doing all this Mm -hmm. you know so why am i gonna sell it to you for 15 so you could sell it for 60 when i could get it when i could sell this for 80 Perhaps. yourself yeah cut you know? the middle man oh, uh. well not just that but it's also going back to that value that me and Ruben have uh-huh. creating for ourselves mm. you know because that was the most important part when I came on board mm-hmm. um, because he started at the flea market and not that there's an issue with the flea market mm-hmm. but there's standards right mm-hmm. if you want to sell something at a certain price point Mm. there's places that you there's things that you have to do to get that yeah right? for sure yes because if you're with a whole bunch of other people vendors and you know they're selling what you're selling for a, you know a dollar you know like i'm just getting lucky i got a rage against the machine shirt from that vendor down the street that mm. you're selling for 300 mm-hmm. you know it doesn't make sense to me yeah, yeah, right. you know like it's not the right place for that. Okay. okay. For that. Okay. And that was, you know, our conversation. Okay. 
and that's kind of how we started doing the indoor thing, the indoor pop ups. Indoor pop ups. Okay. So yeah. I wanted to ask you, um, well, just t- since you brought up pop ups, um, for Tri State Vintage. First of all, like I've always been, I, I want to know how did. If you even know, like, where did that even come from? Who's even involved? Like, and what's your... I mean, it's all Ruben's thing. It's all Ruben's? Yeah. Like, we've had conversations about stuff like, yo, man, they're doing all these pop-ups. We Mm. need to do one. Okay. You know, like, we got to do it before anybody else does it. Okay. He started the Tri-State Vintage pop-up, did it at the Meadowlands, and, you know, me and him are pretty cool. You know, like, Mm -hmm. we have dinner, we have... You know, because I I enjoy conversations with him Mm -hmm. because... He's so full of knowledge, mm-hmm. you know, like, and not only that, you might learn a thing or two. You For might, sure. you might take on a good, good, uh, some type of lesson or something. Right. You know, there's, there's always something again. And again, it's, it's a two way street here, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, and, um, man, I forgot. I just had a brain fart. Uh, me, I'm sorry. Uh, about tri-state vintage. Uh, it was Ruben's. Oh idea. yeah. So he started it. And we were having dinner. He's like, yo, I, you know, you need to do Tri-State. You need to do the pop-up. I'm mm-hmm. like, listen, man, I, I'm, I'm not doing that at the Meadowlands. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> not because I'm too good, right. but because I'm full of all this knowledge and value. But yet, you know, we're here amongst all these other vendors. Not, there's nothing wrong. But, mm-hmm. like, when, when these other vendors, when they're getting the supply from mm-hmm. the guy next to them, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, that's... Uh, to me, it's it's not really the best. <laughs> I, I know exactly. What <laughs> you you got to separate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to exactly separate. Exactly what you mean. It. Yes, yes. Uh, like, if you, he still does it, and he still makes bread. Uh-huh. So that's him. That's his hustle. Mm-hmm. You know, that's him bringing his value his wherever value. he goes. Yeah, for sure. You know, for sure. So that's that's very good. You know, uh-huh. we either the pop up helped him with that build. You know, accumulate that value or mm-hmm. whatever. Um, he still does and he still makes bread, mm-hmm. but I ain't gonna do that. Yeah, yeah. You know, but uh, that's not your individual. But again, it's yeah, yeah. to each their own. Like I still respect it. It's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with it. Mm-hmm. It's just I don't want it to go there. I feel you. You know. Okay. Um, and he, excuse me. Good. Um, again, we don't see everything eye to eye. Right. You know. Uh, and that's an important, another important thing. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to be open to opinions. You that's have true. to. If you value this person, you have to be open. Just right. You have to listen to take criticism. Yes. You know, like there's nothing wrong with taking criticism. Uh, some people look at it as a bad thing. You know, if, if you want something to come of something, then you have to listen to all angles, yeah. you know, and it's perspective, too. It's all perspective. There's no and, right or wrong. Just, you know, the and when it comes down to the pop up. It's like, all right, well, how do we give the consumer the best experience, right? Mm-hmm. And, again, I have my my say, and he has his say. Mm-hmm. It might not be the same, but at the end of the day, it's, all right, well, this is what you think, and this is what I think, and this is what this person thinks, and, like, we'll figure it out, mm. you know? We'll we'll there's, yeah, yeah there's, there's a gray area, mm. yes. you know, to figure this, this out. Uh, so it's important. It's always important to be open. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, because at the end of the day, the most important part is the consumer experience. Exactly. So how exactly. do you give that to them? Mm-hmm. You know, if you start to say, "Oh well, nah, I'm better," like, no, my what I said is better. It's like you're losing, you're losing focus of what's important the, the mission, here. Yeah. You yeah. know, you're now goal. you're not thinking about the consumer anymore. You just nope. want to be right. Yeah. Uh, and what we what we want. I guess it's not really important because it's what the consumer wants, yep. you know, mm-hmm. and you know, that's what it falls down to. Yeah. And that's you why know? I'm going to just keep y'all. Like I said, this is going to be a, a episode of flowers. I'm going to give like you and Ruben all the flowers because Thanks, it seems that. like it really is just about like what you were even saying, just about aesthetically. You'd be like, yo, like I just aesthetically, we're just focusing on just certain things and the customer experience and just the yeah. product itself and yep. the, all the information and knowledge that comes behind it. It doesn't just seem like it's about, oh, let's just make, make this quick buck or let's just, you know. And I think that's the biggest misconception mm. uh, because a lot of people think it's just so easy. You yeah, know, it's so yeah. easy to find this at the, yeah. the Value Village and go and sell, sell it, it, make a few bucks yeah. and mm-hmm. then, or grab it and sell it on the street. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll put it on the rack. 
And yeah, someone will Somebody buy it. It's really nice. It. Like, yeah. I don't got to go out of my way to sell this thing. Like, no, man, you got to sell it. Well, you know, that's a method. It's about the experience There's, that you get with even just like that might even get that sale. Like some people will just you might get the sale just off of the conversation and the experience that you get yeah. with the person, you know. And it's it goes back to like conversations that I've had with Ruben. I'll ask him like, yo, what do you think about this? He's like, it's cool. They're like, I don't know if I should take it. I don't right. know if I could flip this, mm-hmm. you know, because not everything is a name brand. Mm-hmm. Some yep. of this stuff is just for pure style. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, well, do you like it? I'm like, yeah, I like it. So you should buy it. Because yeah. if you like it and you believe that it looks good, then someone else Maybe will too, mm-hmm. you know? So, you know, there's tidbits. There's, yeah. you know, there's always something good to take away from conversations with him, I feel like. Um, because again, we all want to do better. Mm. You know, we all want to grow. We want to keep pushing that, those boundaries that right. we've kind of made for ourselves. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, it's cool, yeah. you know, when it gets that, you know, get to that point. Shit, man. Damn, Dante, man. do you have questions? I, I know, like, <laughs> like I said, this is no, my you shit. you asked all the questions I have. This is dope, though. <laughs> I would. <laughs> I can talk about this all day. No, nah, me it's... too. I love it because I don't have, like, <laughs> I'm the type of person and I ain't going to hold you, like, I don't have a lot of friends or people I know who's even into this shit. So, yeah. like, all of my friends and family and people I'm around, like, all this shit just be foreign. And, like, I don't it really. Is. I don't. Yeah, I, and I really feel like it's, it's something that I want to do. And that's why I'm so happy I, like, we're, we're even able to, like, do this. Because, like, one of my goals is just, like, yo, I want to start connecting more with people who do the same shit that, yeah. like, or not even the same shit, but similar interests that, like, I have and shit. So, it's just really inspiring just, like, seeing, like, oh, your journey or, yeah, like, man. even hearing about, like, Ruben's journey and yeah, fuck yeah. other people I just meet, like, at the Goodwill. Well, you the know? thing, yo, it's, Ruben's a whole nother, I, I, I wish he was here because he would have been able to say it, but, like, he's a little older than me. So, mm-hmm. he, his knowledge, like, he's lived a lot more than I have. Mm-hmm. Like, I was born in 89. I only know a lot about what I know is because my older brother, mm. he was six years older than me. So, okay. you know, when I was five, six, you know, I was listening to the Rough Riders. Mm-hmm. You know, DMX right. was like one of my favorite artists. Mm-hmm. Right. RP. Um, and you had, you know, this was the No Limit era, oh, you know, yeah, so. Yeah. And, you know, he, and he was shopping at the stores, you know, that sold Pele Pele. Mm. And, uh you know, Mark Buchanan, okay. you know, it's the same thing, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all those brands, you know, the urban brands at the time, you mm-hmm. know, Lugs, Sheesh, yeah. you know, so I was introduced to all these things at a young age, mm-hmm. but he, like, my brother never lived it okay. because he's a few years younger than Ruben, okay. Okay. but Ruben was really there. He okay. was at the tunnel, you know, he yeah, knows yeah, about yeah, all yeah. these things. Yeah. So, like, it's a difference when you're it, experiencing it. It's crazy. For sure. It's crazy because I only heard about it, yeah, yeah. Right. you know, but like, it's different when you actually experience yeah, it. Yeah, man. Like he, he'll be like, "Nah, man, that didn't happen." At the tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't, yeah, you yeah. couldn't do that. At the tunnel. <laughs> oh, he goes, "I promise man. you, you can't." And these are the things that he'll say. He be like, "Listen, man. Like, I, I was wearing a tank top because it was so hot in there, you know." Um, but you, again, you gotta remember, it's it's a bunch of, I don't want to say hood motherfuckers, but like, urban people yeah. in yeah. in a in a space where it was dominated by rap. Yeah, yeah, for you sure. You know? For sure. And he was just like, yo, it used to get hot in there. It used yeah. to get so hot. You know, people stealing jackets out of the coat room. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> so you're the real life experience, the real wow. life shit, yeah. He's like, you know, I've seen fights happen between yeah. this person and this person. Yeah. You know, like, he's seen it. Yeah, yeah. So, it, you know, it's... it's it's it, crazy. It's so valuable just getting, right. sh- like, having, like... I don't want to call him an elder. Like, I, I know, like, because uh, I'm, I'm in that, like, African spirituality. Like, we call it, like, the elder. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, the, OG. Or OG, you know, however, whatever term you use. But, like, it's so valuable just having, like, the firsthand people who get, like, or tell you from the firsthand experiences that, like, you might not hear from, like, whatever life advice to right. business advice to mm-hmm. whatever type of shit. So, um, no, it's really dope how, like, y'all can even have that relationship to even yeah, no, it's, it's just, share yeah, whatever no, experience. I have, know? I've had a bunch of great conversations with him mm-hmm. uh just because like again the learning curve doesn't stop yeah yeah you know you, it's always something to learn um and if you really appreciate it it's gonna matter yeah. you're always gonna be willing to just learn more and yeah, hear man. out yeah. whatever it's like it, it was just crazy you know um because again he's he lived it yeah. you know i yeah. can only remember seeing it on tv right you know like I wish I could have attended one of those MTV uh, 
concerts on the beach. I yeah. forgot what they call that. Um, it's not the it's not the party. Oh no no, that's not the beach jam. The uh, it's one of those things. I one forgot those, what the yeah. I, I, I was, like you know, it's just the, like yeah, yeah, I watched yeah. that Spring documentary, yeah. uh, Woodstock '99, and it's like, <laughs> yes. bro, like I was nine years old, uh, so I couldn't have attended attended that thing. But yeah. like just watching, it's like fuck, dude, I would. That's that shit looks fucking yeah. wild. Oh dude, oh dude. Uh, so it, it's it definitely hits different when he's talking to the person that really knows, no. you know. So for sure, uh, for sure. Yeah, man. Yeah. Nah, that's what's up. That's what's up. Oh, uh, nah, that's part. Yo, Dad, should we? Uh, did you have any other uh, topics or? Uh, bring honestly, up? no. I actually fucking love this conversation. No, I mean too. Me. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna hold you. And <laughs> usually, Dante's in, in charge of like uh, doing the topics, but he left it to me today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm sorry if we just kept it nah, on business. Bro, this but, is fucking nah, dope. dude, you're fine. But, this is uh, fucking dope. I don't know. I thought this was a good, good no, conversation. No, I fucking man. love this episode. Nah, um, this especially to just dope. entrepreneurs, people who just. Like find a hobby, like it's just. Yeah. I feel like it's cool just it's to hear people's story. Man. Like it lights lights people fire. Like yeah. it lights yeah. know that other people are obsessed I, with this shit. Yeah. Like you're, one thing that I should apologize is if I derailed on anything. No, because I, no. I probably did. Because no. it's very easy for me to derail. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that's what the, on topic, a podcast is perfect. You want to like from one topic that, to the yeah. next. It's just like because it's again, it's it's in unison mm-hmm. and yeah. it just fucking flows, man. Mm-hmm. Like I've yep. lived this shit so it's just like oh yeah now like yeah i, I fucking know exactly what you're talking about now yeah, yeah, yeah. uh so my bad if no it's, trust no, me it's perfect good. i tend to do that a lot no nah, i think you should, <laughs> i think you should have to have your own podcast you all bro. the time like, nah, you know. have so much knowledge you're just like you're, you're mad smart you know what uh, I'm uh, like, i don't i don't say that but thanks <laughs> i appreciate that nah, nah, for sure bro like i think this has been like a really good conversation yeah um very yeah. inspiring for me like i needed that like i love just hearing Oh, like I appreciate story. that. You know well, saying? you know, it's it's nice to kind of always share, uh, because not not a, a, I guarantee you a lot of people don't care. Yeah, yeah. You know, they you go to the fuck. goodwill, no one gives a fuck. Man, you've been doing this for you've been working in fashion for thirteen years. Man, fuck your thirteen years. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. I just started yesterday. Fuck you. Yeah. You know, and that's kind of the, how some of their mentalities yeah, be yeah. like yeah. because they're only there for the monet. You know, they're there for the money. And that's not a problem. Like, I have a lot of friends that go there strictly for the money. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there, there's a wall that divides me and other people because... It's not just about it's, the money. It's... Well, I'm very passionate about... About that. About just fashion, yeah, clothing, yeah. quality, you know, the whole nine. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I'm, I'm very old school when it comes to some stuff. You okay. know, like, I only wear Nikes. When it comes to shoes, I only wear Nikes. Okay. You know, okay. so you see me with the Nike socks. I got Nike underwear. Yeah, so, yeah, like... Yeah. When someone comes in the room, because it's very common at the Goodwill, mm-hmm. Under Armour shorts, Adidas sneakers mm-hmm. with Nike socks, <laughs> and then and it's like, bro, what? Like my head is exploding. <laughs> like what are you my doing? yeah, but it, it like I don't. Obviously, it's not a big deal, but it's yeah. just like for me, it's like. Phew. This guy, right. <laughs> this guy really over here. No, it's like, look crazy too, if you think about it. Like it looked crazy. It looks crazy. Like, it's perspective, man. It's um, perspective. But uh, yeah, you know, because to when I say that to some people, like, dude, you're nuts. Mm-hmm. But like, what does that matter? Yeah. Like, it actually matters a lot. Uh, because you're just wearing a string of competitors on one body, and it's just it looks crazy. I don't know. It looks crazy. Yeah, so nah. I'm sorry. I'm nah, not. Some of y'all out there, y'all be looking wild. Bro. I ain't gonna hold you. Y'all I gotta check wild. out the Goodwill, man. I gotta see. I'm gonna up. bring Dante. I I'm, really want to nah, see Nah, Dante, this you would hate that shit. You know what's Listen, funny? Man, I that hate, place is. I hate a bunch uh, of people. Like I, I, I can't go in thrift stores because it's too many clothes for me. Like it's, it's not even overwhelming. I just be like, yo, this is too much. Like I don't even feel like going. Well, stuff. I'm there quite frequently, so like I know what's new. Right. And there will always be that time where there's some someone grabs something and put it in another place. Okay. So I, but I didn't know. Mm. But I can't listen. I, like I said before, I can't be everywhere at all oh, the time. Like I can't yeah. can't see everything. Because there, there's been times where I went to the thrift store, and on the tag it'll have the date on it. I'm like, oh wow, this is a good piece. And I see on the tag it's been sitting there for three days. I'm like, what the. Oh, fuck I, I, I've been here for three days straight yeah, I didn't see this yeah, see, that's yeah. a good thing you'll always like <laughs> find something even though you might think you've gone through everything there's always something else that's gonna come yeah. you know oh yeah 100% there's always something else. there's always something man and you know the, the, the game's always changing so yep. changing. you know so like even now you know like you go to the thrift stores you know I'll get these Y2K denim mm-hmm. 10 bucks I'll sell them for 150 200 mm-hmm. but 
they don't know that yet. They're they're still hooked on the t-shirt thing. Mm-hmm. You know, sports, jerseys, yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. the popular stuff, the yeah. real cool stuff. Um or you know, what they is, think is cool. Yeah, yeah. You know, right. so like they that's what they price the stuff at. So it's nice that the style is constantly changing it's because changing. yeah. That change is in my favor. Mm. That's true. That is you know, true. You know, because oh, yeah. I'm I'm already up on I'm up on oh, it already. Oh, these right. doors ain't. Yeah. You know, so when they see me get these fucking Jankos, like what the fuck, these things yeah. are ugly. Yeah. And then when it's when the style or the trend changes, it's like you're you're just up on everything. You're already ahead so, of the game, touch it. You know what I'm saying? You gotta stay one foot. Yeah. And it's but it's getting harder because I'm getting older. So I really don't care Trying about to, like, much. Keep up on the new yeah, shit. Man, yeah, man. Like <laughs> hanging It'd with the rough. kids and shit. And that. And, kids. But that's why I like. That's why I like the kids that come to the Goodwill. Don't because, it, like, doesn't it suck when you're at that age and you gotta say yeah, shit like man, that? Like I'm. I don't want to say the uncle, but like <laughs> you know, I'm always again just like, yo, what's up, kids? Yeah. Like what? What up, young what's young up, blood? Kids? Like. <laughs> <laughs> Cause like you know they're eighteen, they're nineteen, they know right. what's going on, and yeah, I have I'm friends with a few of them. Yeah, yeah. Right. And they're, they're, you know they're really good kids. Yeah, you know yeah. this guy's at Wash doing his thing, or this guy's next guy skateboarding, sponsored by this person, yeah. just goes to the Goodwill for clothing. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's again different walks of life. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but from there, you know, it's just me watching. Like, oh, this is what you guys are doing now. Yeah, yeah. Like, and it's. It's hard sometimes to even find stuff to wear. You know, that's another question people ask. Like, oh, do you ever keep any of this stuff? But like, man, it's hard. It's hard to keep some of it. I do. I keep a lot of stuff. I'm but, sure, yeah. Um, it's the stuff that I know that I'm going to wear every day. I feel like resellers, no matter how much shit they have, they just re- re-wear the same shit. So that was a bad habit that I, that I had to break out of. I feel like um, most resellers do that like, because this was when my this was when I was burnt out. Yeah. This was me being aware, like, oh man, I am burnt, I am burnt, but I don't care. I'm still gonna come here. Yeah, wow. Uh, yeah, it was crazy, dude. I was just like, gung like Tunnel gung vision. ho, bro. Like, no, no trade offs here, man. No days off. I'm yeah. just 